Well, welcome everyone. Great to have you all here. I'm John Little, Associate Professor of Geography at Monroe Community College in Rochester, New York. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Brian Tomaszewski. Uh, Brian is an Associate Professor in the School of Interactive Games and Media and the Golisano College of Computing and Information Sciences at the Rochester Institute of Technology. He earned his PhD in geography from Penn State University. I've known Brian for many years and have always appreciated his interest in working with uh, community colleges. You may know Brian's uh, textbook, GIS for Disaster Management. Um, he has extensive international uh, work. He's currently the principal investigator of a NSF international research experience for students titled Mapping and Quantifying the Natural Disaster Resilience of Displaced People with the University of Rwanda Center for GIS and Remote Sensing. As a part of his disaster management research, he has developed serious games play that teaches disaster management and resilience skills. And if any of you play the banjo, I'm sure he'd be happy to chat afterwards. He's quite good. So we are very fortunate to have Brian here today to share more about GIS and video games, a new paradigm for geographic visualization and interaction. Uh, we should have time at the end for a few questions. For now, Brian, it's all yours. All right, great. Thanks, John, for that really uh, wonderful introduction. And happy GIS day to all of you out there. I hope that you've had a, a, a good, engaging day learning um, about GIS. So I think this is the last session for the GIS day from the Geotech Center. So thanks for sticking around. Or if you're just joining it for this, thanks for coming to my talk. Um, John did a really great job introducing me. Um, so I'll just move right into um, my sort of outline. So here's what I'll talk to you about today for the next well, about a half hour. We'll have some time for questions. Um, first, give you a little background about GIS and games. And I am going to try to make this as hands-on and try to demonstrate things as best as I can to you. Um, so I use a lot of the Esri software products. Um, I first learned about GIS in 1999, and I drove by Map Info's world headquarters to go do a session to learn about Esri ArcView 3.1 um, for any of you that might remember um, Map Info and so forth. So this will be a lot about Esri technology. Um, unfortunately, well, it, it is what it is. Um, a lot of these things I'm talking about aren't really in the open source world, or at least I don't know about them. So if you're a QGIS user, I mean, that's awesome. Um, but this will be very steered towards Esri tools, ArcGIS Pro, and so forth. And um, we'll also talk about um, some other tools, Unity, a game engine. And I'll give you some demonstrations from my um, work that um, John alluded to in the, um, in the, uh, the introduction. Oh yeah, and as the last point, I'll tell you where to go from here. You know, GIS Day, I hope you've used this day to learn about things and um, I'll give you some specific ideas where to go next after this talk. So, so a little background, GIS and games. Um, if you're like me, you know, you love, you've loved maps. Maybe that's why you pursued um, uh, your degree in geography or Maybe that's why you're doing a, a minor in GIS or, you know, I don't know who you guys are, where you're coming from, but I think we all agree we're here for GIS Day. We love maps. And one of the um, classic examples of that is the game Risk, right? So games are inherently spatial, and that's the key idea here. And um, Risk, long before I knew anything about computers in my age, um, this was one of the, the great examples of that. Now, GIS, specifically in games, is not necessarily a new topic. Um, this is a citation I pulled out from some of the early work on really incorporating GIS tools together with game concepts um, from Ola Alfquist, who's at Ohio State, if you're familiar with him. This was his paper published in 2012 on the topic of basically incorporating GIS in game ideas for um, studying human environment simulation. That's what um, you know, they were interested in back then. Now, fast forward almost 10 years from this paper. Um, again, I don't know exactly who's on this presentation, but if you're um, somebody who likes games on your phone, you know, Pokemon Go, right? I mean, that's 
in in recent times, this Pokemon Go is often cited as real world, you know, combining the real world with a game um, experience and specifically using augmented reality or AR, right? So in this, um, I'd say if I was in a classroom, I'd say raise your hand if you've ever played uh, Pokemon Go, um, if you're familiar with it. But basically, if you've never seen Pokemon Go, um, the executive summary here, and this is they take the real world images. I think it used to be Google Maps. I'm not really sure how they, they actually build it these days, but they impose um, the characters onto the real world space, and then that becomes the basis for the game. And in fact, if you look up my home department, one of our new faculty actually um, has got a lot of funding from Niantic, the company that builds Pokemon Go. And they're doing tons of research on this, the experience of gaming using the real world. And um, it's a pretty exciting area if you've never considered it. Um, I, I'm not going to really talk about augmented reality, but it's also a very interesting um, area that you can go. And that's not anything new in GIS really as well, but there's just new ways it's being used today. Okay. So as a follow-up, you know, so what's different now? Um, I mean, I said that, you know, maps and games have been around forever with risk. There's been research on GIS and games, but I think the points I think I would argue are um, you're seeing more and more of the real world becoming the basis for the game. And that's, I think Pokemon Go is the exemplar of that. And I, again, encourage you to look more into that if that's what you're interested in. Um, and check in the chat. Um, but I think the second point here, and that's what I'm going to spend the rest of my time really talking about, it's becoming, e well, easier to directly incorporate existing geospatial data sets directly into game development platforms. And to me, for my, you know, my research on games and GIS, I think this is what's really exciting. And I think for you as GIS students and perhaps as faculty, if you're watching this presentation, I think this is um, something to really give some serious consideration to. And um, that's what I'll talk about in the rest of the presentation. Um, that using my own examples for my own work and so forth. So in that regard, if we talk then about, um, GIS tools, and again, as I said in the beginning, I'm going to talk a lot about Esri tools because that's just what I know about. Um, so if you know of something better, put it in the chat box, share it with other people. I mean, I think that's the spirit of what we're doing today. These are screenshots from um, a project that I led that um, was called an NSF REU Research Experience for Undergraduates. And this was early work we did on building games using real world data related to disaster resilience and disaster spatial thinking. So what you see on the left here um, is a screenshot of City Engine. And this is, I believe, from 2018. So the software itself might look a little different. But what my students um, did, did back then, we did a project related to Hurricane Harvey, where we found real world data sets from a place called Dickinson, Texas, which is just south of Houston. And we use that as the basis for creating a virtual world with a tool called Unity that I'll talk about in just a moment. And so basically from the image on the left, we went from using City Engine to bringing three-dimensional models exported out of City Engine and then brought that into Unity. And um, if you want to look up, I'll, I'm going to plug my YouTube channel a little later in the presentation. These were screenshots taken from a video where we go through all that research. Um, and then this is still a very valid uh, way to go. Um, it has its drawbacks, but it also has its benefits. And I'll, and I'll talk about those in just a moment. Now, the newest thing that's come out in the, probably in about the calendar year, um, if you're going to use your existing GIS tools for building video games, is looking um, back at ArcGIS Pro. And in most... You know, I, I think at this point, most modern GIS curriculum, they should be teaching you about ArcGIS Pro, assuming that you're using Esri. Um, ArcGIS Pro has been out for many years now. Um, I, you know, if you're using ArcView and the older tools, I think this might work, but, um, you know, ArcGIS Pro is, is sort of where Esri has been at for a while. And if you've never seen ArcGIS Pro um, or never done the 3D tools, 
it has built right into it um, some decent 3D tool sets. So the basic workflow now, what you can do is you can create 3D data sets in ArcGIS Pro, and that's what you see on the left hand side of this image. And this is actually a slide I took right from my teaching to teach this uh, basic workflow to my students. And so you create 3D data sets in ArcGIS Pro, and then you can publish them to um, ArcGIS Online, which again, in most modern um, GIS curriculum, ArcGIS Online is becoming more central to uh, to teaching about GIS, especially with Esri tools. Um, I believe when I looked on the program, there was discussion of story maps. So story maps are an example of, of, a, of a tool from Esri that comes through ArcGIS Online. So from ArcGIS, you know, from ArcGIS Pro to ArcGIS Online, you can publish your 3D data sets as, where, as one form called a scene layer. And then the new thing is on the far right of this image is the ArcGIS Maps SDK for Unity. And that's a special piece of technology that's designed to directly connect 3D GIS data directly into a game environment. And for me, that's what's the really new thing. Because now, imagine all that GIS data that you learn about in your classes, or even, you know, you could create 3D data from that, or you have existing data, you now have a direct sort of pipeline to bring that data directly into a game. Um, in the past, it took a lot of development effort, um, like the REU game we showed you took a lot of uh, special programming and really highly specialized skill sets. So... If, you're, if you've never seen a game development environment um, or really even considered it as another tool in, in your sort of interdisciplinary GIS arsenal, um, it, it really is something to uh, consider, especially for, you know, of course, for 3D and interaction. So with that, let's take a little closer look now at some of these individual components. Um, Esri has in beta release, it's called the ArcGIS Maps SDK for Game Engines. And like I said, this is a way that you can plug in existing geospatial data into um, a tool called Unity. And again, if we were in person, I would say raise your hand if you ever heard of Unity or um, worked with it. But in the event you haven't, um, I thought, I'll spend two minutes, um, we'll watch a quick video um, from a YouTube video I published earlier this year that's just a quick tour of Unity. So I believe the sound should come through. Somebody let me know, I'm gonna play a video that has me talking. Let me know if you can't hear it. I, I'm gonna start it up. So what's oh, this? Yeah. Oh yeah, thanks John. So, you know, GIS is very interdisciplinary. So this is nothing with GIS, but this is Unity. This is like, I, I tell, uh, like if you're familiar with ArcGIS Pro and you've built your career around ArcGIS Pro and Esri tools in the game development world, this is like the ArcGIS Pro for game building um, Unity. It's like one of the major big software packages. It takes a huge amount of effort to learn it. Um, I'm not an expert on it, but I've learned enough to guide you through. So let's play this video and we'll do a little walkthrough of it. Let's now do a very quick tour of Unity. Okay. Thanks, John. Thanks, to be sir. clear and upfront, I'm not an expert on Unity, but I've learned a little bit about this exciting software package to show you how you can bring 3D GIS data into a game environment. Let's first take a look at a 3D game project that does not have an explicit connection to GIS just to show you around Unity a little bit. Unity actually has similarities with ArcGIS Pro. For example, the main view is called a scene. The scene is where you combine all the elements of your game known as assets. Kind of like in ArcGIS Pro, you have data layers, feature classes, tables, and so forth. The project folder is where you can manage all your assets, just like the catalog view in ArcGIS Pro. When you click on an asset in the hierarchy window, it brings up the inspector window, 
where you can set the properties for an asset, like in this case, the settings for a camera. To preview your game, you hit the play button. In this example, the avatar can run around, jump, and attack. All of this is controlled by using the keyboard and the mouse. It's fun to play a game like this, but it takes a lot of work to put something like this together. Everything in the game has to be developed from animation of the characters, to the lighting, to the camera, and so much more. That's why game development is such a complex, multidisciplinary, but exciting topic. All right, can you hear me now? Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's, again, you know, just for learning, that's what, that's what, if you've never seen a game development environment, you got to start somewhere. I mean, think about the first time you ever saw ArcGIS Pro or something like that. Um, you know, it can be, both of these are, both of them are really, daunt, can be daunting if you've never seen them. But so the department I'm in now at RIT, that's what students spend a whole four-year degree and graduate degree on learning how to drive this kind of software. Just like some of you are spending your degree efforts in geography or whatever, learning about GIS and all this concept. So you know, bringing the two together. Um, Let's now do a very... Okay, yeah, so um, um, let's do a demo now of Unity Quick Tour. Hang on, sorry. Yeah, okay, let me, um, now let me try, I'll do a live demo now. Um, I'm going to share up, I'm going to show you now very briefly um, something different. Stop this. I'm going to stop my share. Okay, hang on, guys. I'm going to do a different share now. Um, Do you see like um basically this is Unity? Do you see like a like a red thing, a green thing, and a blue thing in the middle? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what this is this is Unity. Now this is not a video. This is me just playing around with it. Um, but this is an example of that ArcGIS SDK. I still I haven't really quite learned it's the ArcGIS Maps SDK for game engines. I'm just going to call it the SDK. <laughs> It's a little wordy to try to write it to say it all out. Now you don't really see much of anything at the moment, but the key thing here is to look at over on this right-hand side where it says inspector. So basically what Esri has done is with this plugin, they've given you the ability to pull in some of your existing 3D data and have it just render out in, um, in Unity without having to write any computer code. Now I'll talk about it at the end of the presentation. Writing computer code is actually a really huge part of all this. But if that's not a skill set you currently have, or you know, would you know if you if that would be a barrier for you doing this, you can do it with just putting some things in. So for example, what I'm going to do is um, it's the same terms if you're familiar with 3D and ArcGIS Pro, a global scene versus a local scene. And that's in terms of how you manage the sort of coordinate space and and the um, the, uh, the sort of rendering and processing of the data. So you give it an origin location. Um, these ones are gonna be near where I live in Rochester. It's gonna have a camera. Um, you can't really see. Um, um, it's in there, it's a little, it's a little hard to see it. Um, and the extent of your map, um, for you're basically the extent of where the game goes, you have your, your, all your familiar Esri base maps that you know from ArcGIS Pro. And then you have down here, you have your data layers. And all these are, are ArcGIS online URLs that are plugged in using this, um, this um, user UI, uh, user interface UI. So um, my game is not really even a game. Um, I don't, you know, my, my video I showed was a lot cooler with the, the, the avatar running around with a sword. But here's if I fire it up.
So I'm going from the um, preview mode And let's see, they're working correctly. Okay, so this is always the danger of doing live demos. <laughs> it's not working exactly how I want. Um, I've got a, some kind of weird error message. Um, let, me, um, let me try one more thing here. So those of you that ever work with ArcGIS Pro, you know that it's a perfect software that never crashes or gives you uh, gives you trouble. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Well. So okay. So my demo, my live demo, didn't work very well here. Um, so what I'm going to do? I'm I was ready for this. We'll go back to my PowerPoint because being somebody who's done these kind of things before. Okay, John, do you see a slide that says black up slides if Unity demo does Yes. <laughs> so this is the safety net for just that. <laughs> so here's what it, here's, here's, um, so we, I talked to you about, this might even be easier, but basically in, you know, once you get the plugin to work, you plug in all of your map extent, your URLs, and then um, this is what it should have looked like. There was some weird issue. I just didn't uh, know what was going on. But what you're seeing in this, in this, I wanted to show it to you more interactively. What you're seeing here, though, is these um, grayish kind of um, rectangles were 3D extruded objects that were published as a web scene and then pulled into the game using the thing I showed you earlier. And then this image um, I took from, um, I don't expect you guys to know this, I took it from what's called, we have in New York, the New York State GIS Clearinghouse that publishes a lot of like imagery data for our state. So I find that often it gives you a little bit more detail than what the Esri base map imagery can do. And also to kind of demonstrate the concept. So these are two things that I, I pulled into Unity using that plugin without writing a single line of code. I basically just followed a tutorial on the, um, the SDK website to set that all up. Um, even though it, it, it didn't perform the way I wanted to at, at the moment. Um, you know, this is, this is what, this is, this is what's possible if you're looking for just a basic starting point, okay? Um, so now let me show you another um, thing that we built this summer. What, like, so what I showed you earlier with my demo that didn't really work in Unity, was a very basic kind of game, or you know, at least a game environment. There was no narrative or anything, but like, now this is what you can do with more time, more resources. And this is a, a game called Project Lake Ontario. And um, let me once again, I'm going to stop my, let me go out of my presentation, stop my share. Okay, so John, thanks for your help. Do you now see like, uh, um, do you see like sort of like a car and a house? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So what you guys see here now, this is Project Lake Ontario. Really quick for some background, where I live in upstate New York, we have Lake Ontario, and we had major floods happen here in 2017 and 2019. And um, so what this project, what this is designed to do is to simulate lake flooding. And so what I have here, also built in Unity, um, I can switch around between different camera views to look at. Um, I don't expect anybody to really know this, but this is a neighborhood called Edgemere Drive that literally like looking this direction, that's Lake Ontario to the north. And then to the south, um, you have what's called Cranberry Pond. And then right in the middle, as people tend to do, they tend to live in probably the most disaster prone areas. And so when, when Lake Ontario flooded, this whole um, neighborhood was impacted. So what we did was we took real world LIDAR data that we got again from, um, I believe from Monroe County. 
And we use that as the basis for building realistic terrain. And we also use the LIDAR data to get the actual houses. And then the students using programming were able to simulate um, the flooding levels. Now, if you watch that water, watch how it's creeping up. And I don't know if you look at your upper, upper left of the screen, it says approximate water level 249. Right. So now I can use I can use the functionality of a game, the interaction of a game, to simulate what the water would look like. Okay, and that's what I'm really excited about. So I'm using you know GIS doesn't necessarily allow you to, as far as I know, do this kind of stuff. But this is what game the interaction abilities of a, of a video game give you. You know I can programmatically set the water level. Um, we had some feedback from somebody who works for the, it's called the New York State Sea Grant about putting sandbags out to see what that would look like. So we can really simulate using game technology, what flooding might look like using as real possible data, um, driven by GIS. And so for where we live with this issue, this will potentially be a really, um, nice, uh, tool that we can use to kind of look at what flooding, you know, because the water level policies are all very much based on those water levels. So when we try to look at what these policies are going to do, uh, having a good simulation has um, potentially a lot of uh, importance. So that's Project Lake Ontario. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. Okay, so John, you should see the slide. You see the slide demo project Lake Ontario. Yes. Thank you. So that worked. Um, I did have uh, backup slides in case that didn't work either, but <laughs> that one worked. So you got to see it. So now that one was built. Uh, I'm gonna. I'll wrap. That's kind of a, um, that one was built with um, City Engine, and I'll talk about why we did that. So basically, you know, so where do you go from here? Um, if you are interested in getting started with game development, like I said, Unity is a really big software package. It's on par with something like ArcGIS Pro in terms of like complexity, features, concepts you have to learn, even the price. Um, the company um, Unity though does have a student edition. So if you're not able to get this link, um, just do a Google search Unity student edition or Unity student plan and you can get your hands on that software. Um, again, not knowing your universities or where you guys come from. If you have a game program, take ask, reach out to them. Um, sometimes game development programs will be inside of computer science if they exist at all. I have no idea given where you guys are coming from, but just something to consider. So, you know, if you want to get into Unity, um, look into that. And here's just my personal advice. You know, I've been teaching GIS for a really long time. In some sense, it's the same message over and over and over again just with different specific things. So I always tell my students, you have to be, if you really wanna make your career in GIS, you have to be interdisciplinary. You know, I learned a long time ago, learning computer programming really opened up a lot of doors for me when I was in the private sector of GIS. And then when I made the switch to go to academia, was in, you know, I was in my mid thirties, you know, having, knowing how to write computer code really helped me with getting funding as a graduate student when I was at Penn State. And it's still, that same general idea is still relevant today. Hence why a lot of your programs will have a course in like geospatial programming. And we encourage you to learn Python. Like if you wanna make model builder scripts or if you wanna do web development, learning JavaScript, it's all, it's all the same stuff. So in game development world, at least with Unity, the language here is C-sharp. Um, I didn't have time to really go into it, but if you look at this bottom middle image, that is C sharp code that can be used to render and write out a game with the Esri, um, the Esri SDK for games, right? They have a full um, software development kit SDK with an API behind it so that you can basically take your games to another level by writing computer code to do that. So 
that that's a good thing just to think about in general with GIS is to be interdisciplinary. Um, you know, the big the big point of the of games too is that they're they're virtual worlds to learn more about uh, 3D. Even if it's something like I'm not an expert on 3D modeling in um, ArcGIS Pro, I've learned I've learned a little bit about these are just basically extruded polygons. But even that can be a starting point to get something into the game. <coughs> um, City Engine is a software I would like to learn more about. Um, I know it's out there, and I'm hoping to learn more about it starting next year. But that's the more advanced 3D from the Esri tool suite. So learn about City Engine. And then I would recommend if you can get that together, try the try the SDK um, first with um, with that user interface. That was my demo thing that crashed. But if you can get some data sets into ArcGIS Online and you can get them plugged in, that'll get you at least started. And the SDK does have its drawbacks. Um, we found over the summer when doing Project Lake Ontario, we started using the SDK, but it, it, it works very good for viewing data and kind of exploring data with, with some basic game controls. But if you want to start doing the more advanced and frankly more interesting things like I showed you with Project Lake Ontario, like watching the water come up and um, putting sandbags out and all kinds, you really need to have, um, as of now, we had to go over to City Engine because the SDK has various uh, issues with sort of preview mode and so forth. So if you want more of a technical discussion, um, feel free to email me. And I should, just to give my, my research group a plug, we probably, it's looking pretty likely we'll have a publication um, in Arc user, which if you're familiar with that, that's one of Esri's like trade, um, trade magazines. Um, so we have a short write-up about the experiences with Project Lake Ontario where we'll talk all about the SDK versus uh, using City Engine and so forth. Um, but that's what I would recommend, you know, if you're if you're a student that got interested in this, um, where to take this presentation to next. So I think that's about the time I had. So I want to just thank you guys for your time. Um, you know, if you haven't seen my uh, my YouTube channel, um, I've been putting a lot of energy into this in the last couple of years. Um, I will be putting more videos out about video games and GIS, but I, I teach a lot of topics. I've been doing a lot of videos on Python. Um, I'm going to hopefully do some more about JavaScript. Um, so uh, definitely check out that channel um, if you want to learn about those kinds of topics and some of my research stuff too. So. Thanks for thanks for inviting me, and again, happy GIS day, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. Great, great, Brian. Thank you. That was a uh, very informative. I really appreciate the detailed ArcGIS Pro 3D workflow, the demos, and and the next steps. Um, I see this field as one that can certainly bridge GIS and gaming. I have a question or two, but would like to open it up to the audience for questions. Um, yeah. Feel free to raise your hand, write your question in chat, unmute yourself. Will somebody, should I read the questions out of the chat? or how Yeah, you? yeah. If you um, see them, yeah, go for it. See. I see uh, lots of good presentation. Thank you. Oh, here we go. So Michelle has a question. Uh, wouldn't you have to program the impermeable factor on the sandbags in the game design? Yes, Michelle, you are absolutely right. And that's, a, that's a, even a better way to explain why we eventually switched over to using making models in City Engine and just bringing them into Unity, because when you use the SDK, they don't the, the things that render in the SDK, like those screenshots, they don't have what are called colliders, right? So that means like you'll just you can fire up a building, and then if you had like an avatar, it'll walk right through it because there's no colliders. So um, so like you know the imper, imperm, impermeable factor, you know. That's those sandbags. I mean, they should have stopped the water. I think that was some programming glitch. But all those buildings now, you can't run into those buildings because they have proper colliders on them. And if you read in, in that um, that article I talked about, we have coming out an Arc user. Um, um, the guy from Rex Hansen, the guy from Esri, even talked about how they've acknowledged that the lack of collision and so forth is something they're working on in the next version of, of the SDK. So that's a great question. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, it looks like Dale has a question. Um, what programming languages should I study for beginners for using GIS in game design? Yeah, Dale, thank you. Um, from what I know of Unity, C Sharp is the language to learn. 
Um, that is what you can use to get started with um, writing out a basic scene. If you look at the, um, the ArcGIS SDK, ArcGIS Maps SDK for games, some of their tutorials even go through how to write C sharp code um, to work with Unity. And they give examples, but for game design, C sharp and Unity seems to be the language like Python is to ArcGIS Pro. I, um, Joyce, uh, I have not worked with Carl Cap. Uh, maybe if you could, maybe if you want to put in the chat um, a link to this person, we can uh, uh, all learn about who he is. Um, and Brian. I'll just, if I could oh, just uh, say, it's easier than typing. I'll get him your information and you, I'll email it to you. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Because I don't have it right here. Okay. No problem. Thank Thanks. you. Um, Brian, I have a question. Um, well, uh, request. Can you um, share your YouTube channel in the chat with us? Oh, sure. We have you too. Um, and what what are your YouTube plans um, specifically for uh, gaming? Um, I think I would like to do more um, just tutorials about working with the Esri um, the Esri SDK. There's the channel. Like I, I, I finally, you know, it's a new area for me too. Um, so I've been trying to learn more about Unity and then how to plug Esri things into it. So I think really just going through how to work with data sets and bring them in. And then I think um, also more about, probably about City Engine um, and bringing those kind of models in too. And that's gonna be a big push for me in the next six months. Awesome. That sounds really cool. Um, can you uh, try sending that YouTube URL yeah, again? Sorry, I didn't realize I sent it to Joyce directly. <laughs> yeah, no worries. It's out there for everyone. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. No, it's all good. Yeah, I've had a chance to um, take a look and it's some. Uh, you have some really good content on there. Thank you. So Dale actually asked one of my questions about how much experience students need and what software um, they should really um, look into. So um, anyone else have any additional um, questions for Brian? Well, it sounds like um, if you do have any other questions, you can feel free to um, send Brian an email if that's all right with you, Brian. Yeah, here, I'll put it. Um... Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.